Hello fellow modelers and styling fanatics, welcome back to my channel. I hope that everyone is doing fine and enjoys the hobby. Concrete Bunker is back again today with another one of its notorious episodes. So, what are we doing on today's episode guys, you may ask, and this is the time to know. So, me and Past George today, we are working on our TAF T34 slash 76 model 1940 from cyber hobby in 1 to 35th scale and kit number 9153 so there is a twist on this build that i have uh, i was planning to do this may not be the ideal kit but since i was planning uh, i was planning this build with this kit this is the kit that i am going to continue so what's there is a twist what's the twist you may ask the twist is that for the first time i am planning to create a diorama around a destroyed t34 and this is my first time depicting a destroyed vehicle uh, well i started the build without uh, without having anything in particular in mind and i as and as I am progressing through it, uh, I came to. Uh, I did not decided. I realized that depicting a, a destroyed vehicle is not as easy as it sounds. You have to plan ahead, scratch, build some stuff, and uh, be sure for uh, exactly what you wanna depict. Uh, anyway, I am. Uh, build is processing nicely I don't wanna uh, I don't wanna reveal a lot of stuff uh, and let's see the first parts of it so you guys know the drill grab the grab yourself a seat make yourself comfortable and crack the mandatory cold one or a hot brew whatever you uh, whatever you prefer and let's see what me and past George have in stock for this episode well 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 welcome back guys to what it looks to be part one of our t34 series now <clears throat> before I start gluing parts parts together I want to talk about uh, this project a little bit um, this is not my usual project when I say not my usual project there is a twist um, what that twist is you may ask and, and that's a really good question so I'm not going to build uh, a normal T-34 you know uh, a T an, operati an operational T-34 my plans is to depict a destroyed T-34 and when I say destroyed I, I don't um, mean completely destroyed you know like uh, I have seen several pictures of destroyed T-34s and uh, I am not talking annihilated you know like <laughs> half of the tank missing or uh, the, the turret uh, flew uh, a few meters away from the rest of the vehicle I'm just going to depict a normally destroyed T-34 if if a uh, normally destroyed is a word so, which means that I am going to approach this uh, build differently this is my first time uh, trying to depict a destroyed tank so take my process and my build with a, a bit of uh, with a pinch of salt Anyway, um, I am going to to continue with the build as I have it in mind, as I have planned, quote unquote, as I have planned it, and we will see uh, how it uh, it processes. So uh, I have cleaned the parts for step number one. And now I am going to grab the instructions to explain you what we are about to do. So, let me grab a pointer. No, not this one, this one. So, this here is step number one. And over here we have to attach the, 
the suspension system housings the the yeah the suspension system housings each one has is uh, they are four on each side and each one in each one each side has uh, is labeled with a different number so as we look at it on this side on my right side we go for knee one and for the left side knee two and we also have these two small pieces over here uh, this is what we are going to do on this portion of the the video let me start gluing some parts together so let's start from the end two parts first so let me grab my glue I am going to use contacta because I need a strong bond here I have unclogged it mere moments ago that's why it is working yeah let me grab what I want to grab let me grab a pair of tweezers because I want you guys to have as good view as possible good view of what I am doing as possible okay let me explain here we have the grooves so over here we have to attach the parts simple as that I know those parts since I have built the AFV T34 with the, full, with the full interior those parts are also located there that's why I am familiar with them AFV club was a really good kit so I can recommend it to you guys the only thing that uh, that kit had uh, as a defect was the the rubber band tracks if you wanna grab the, that kit make sure that you grab a pair of uh, of tracks of individual links either fluids or whatever strikes your fancy now let me apply some extra thing in some spots like here my jar is almost this jar is almost empty that's why you see me shaking it okay now to complete this side we have to attach this not this one sorry that one over here so attach it not make a mess okay and now we are gonna do the same thing from the other side the exact same thing as usual you hear my cat purring in the background probably she always sits on my lap as I model guys I'm really sorry about that that's a habit that I am not fancy of changing
and I don't know why I am silent, but anyway, we're gonna change that on the next part of the video, probably. And let's attach this part now. Okay. First time my left hand did something right. Wow. Okay. So, if you're following my build, exactly, if you're following, if you're building the same kit, this is what you are supposed to be looking at uh, after step one completion, step one of the completion of step one of the instructions. Okay, yeah, so let's leave this aside to dry and let's grab the instructions to talk about the next step, our next step. So, let's erase some stuff. This one is done, this one is done, done, done. And let's move to step number two. Now, on step number two, instructions state that we have to attach um, the suspension arm, the, the, the suspension arms. Now, in my case, I'm not only building a, a destroyed T-34, I want to build it on top of an even terrain, which means that the suspension arms won't be glued in level position now um, I don't know yet what's the exact position that I am going to glue them uh, I will find it out after I create uh, the base of my diorama so I am going to leave them off which means that this one this one this one this one, this, and this are gonna uh, at, are gonna get attached later. So from step number two, we are only going to attach the idler and the sprocket wheel housings, and then we are going to move onwards uh, uh, for step number three. Uh, now, I will clean parts from step number two, the parts that I am going to attach from step number two and step number three, and I am going to be back. Okay, let's start while, well, let's continue while I am unorganized, because this is the thing I do. Okay, let's move these things aside, this, those will be for step number three, together with this one, and let's... Uh, that's what we decided from step number two. Let's <coughs> attach the uh, the sprocket wheel housings first because they are the easy, they are key, the easy parts. They are keyed, so you won't face any problem. There we have one, let's do the other one. Yep. Oh, come on, I don't want to leave fingerprints all over the place. There. Now we have to attach the idler axles and this is something that pisses me off mainly because 
the parts are not keyed so the position will be a little bit iffy I think that we have to attach it in this position and not in that one so minus another point from uh, the cyber hobby kit always pisses me off when uh, positioning of things is a little bit iffy if you know what I mean of course and you know what I mean now we have to there let me make sure there I think, I think, let me check something in the instructions, I wanna see if we have some depiction, you know, oh no, it should be vertical, okay then, vertical it is. There. Uh, there. Not there. Exactly. So, this will mark our step 2 completion of the instructions, and now we have to move to step number 3. So, up on to step number 3, we have to. Um, attach these two which makes the basis for the, the, the towing uh, thing you know the towing uh, part of the vehicle towing hooks so we have these two parts each one is labeled with a different uh, number and there is a groove so you won't be able to misposition that part and there we have it guys let me attach the other one Yep, exactly. Spot on. Now we have to attach the rear armor plate at the hole. But I have forgotten to clean, to remove and clean a piece from the sprue. So give me a moment. So now we are ready. Sorry for this delay, delay, guys. As I said, we have to attach this one, so we have to flip this, and we have to move the things out of the way, apply some glue over here, and here, same on to the other side, and some over here won't do it any harm so this would need to uh, sit flush with those curves and this one the small curve over here need to sit flush with this curve over here so let's see let's try Yes, exactly, I think, there, 
and the that what that was my cat's stomach. Oh god. And there we have it now. We need to attach these two parts. One goes over here, the round one goes over here. Come on, glue. Yep. square one goes here Keep some fine tuning Yes, and that's it for step number for our step number two and step number three. Leaving this aside, yeah. Once again, I spilled glue in my bench <laughs> all over my cutting mat. Okay, I can do it. And let's erase what we have done. This one and this one is done. This one, this one, this one, this one, and this one. So step number three is okay, step number one is okay, let's move onwards. And to step number four, step number four is the construction of the road wheels. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Now there is another thing that I have to note about the road wheels and, and the wheels in general. I am probably going to depict one side of the vehicle uh, caught on fire. This is a, a thought that I have right now. This may change, but anyway, uh, I'm gonna think about it. I am, uh, all, uh, though, which means, sorry guys, that if one side of the vehicle catches fire, this means that the rubber part of the wheel will cease to exist, will be reduced to ashes, which means that I need to think about that a little bit more, although I will need to assemble the the wheels, I will need to assemble the wheels, now I will skip it, so we have to skip step number 4, we have to skip step number 5, apart one part over here, and we have to skip step number six as well for the time being. So I am going to be back for this part of step number five, B10, the front uh, armor plate. And then we are going to continue with step number seven and some work onto the upper hall. Well, okay, let's proceed to the next step. We're going to add a part. Of, uh, from step number 5 of the instructions that's the only part we're gonna add from step number 5 and it is the the, the front armor plate located over here so let's not waste time keep in mind that the three bolts need to look downwards, uh, uh, pointing at the earth, if that makes sense, like so. Okay. And that's, uh, that's what we need to do on the lower hole for the time being. Now we move on to the upper hall. So on to the upper hall, instructions state that we need to glue two pieces over here, where the these holes are, 
and those two pieces are labeled with different numbers now let's start with number e3 first of course and I have uh, kept them in separate baggies as I was removing parts from the sprues and cleaning them just in order for me not to do a mistake so glue application and this small gap needs to point towards the front of the vehicle it clicked in place this one is part E3 now we need to attach part E4 see something guys give me a moment okay I wanted to make sure of, uh, about something yep uh, exactly as so now we have to flip it and let's start from the big parts first which is none other than the rear armor plate that it is going to be located over here placed positioned whatever you prefer in place and now we have uh, the vents the engine deck vents of course and they are all labeled with different numbers that's why I have kept them in separate baggies so over here we have G18 and G20 which is which are going to be positioned at this side mm -hmm. okay yep let's start with part G18 and let's drop it in place And now let's move with part G20. And let me see something. Yep, yeah, let me make sure. I always double check my instructions. It helps me to be sure that I am not making a mistake that I am going to regret later. And we need to place it like so. Come on. Okay. All right. Two parts meet here. The inner, the, the part that we attached in, uh, at the inside with that part, and now we move on to the other side. 
with parts G19 and G21. They are identical. They are identical, but mirror opposites of the pieces that we have just uh, attached mere seconds ago. Now, while I am building, I am attaching parts, I'm gonna tell you what I am thinking. As I've said, I have seen multiple, uh, I have been rich, researching, uh, taking a look at multiple uh, photos of destroyed T-34s. Uh, and I have uh, taken inspiration uh, out of several of them which means that I will need to decide what I want to do what I want to do uh, what is going to be to be which is going to be the finishing shot of this this thing is it going to be a shot over here at the front at the rear I am currently planning to to give this this uh, T-34 a shot over here which means that it penetrated the armor uh, go th through inside the engine and caused an engine fire that is my plan which means that I will have to toy a little bit with this vent this is the vent that goes over here on top of it and I have found a picture where this thing is damaged, damaged and I want to depict the same damage as I have uh, seen in that picture. I will uh, provide the picture somewhere in the screen for you guys to see it and uh, understand exactly what I am saying. So in order to do that I will need to damage this part first, the, the vent part first over here and I will also need to uh, apply some missing detail from over here so uh, under this deck there there are two slats over here and when I say slats I mean parts like those let me give you an example that they are located that they are not located, they are attached like this one and another one ok of course and it won't sit in place, let me use blue tag for that let me use blue tag in order for you guys to understand what exactly I am trying to depict. So normally T thirty fours have two slats, two vents that are either positioned in open position when the vehicle is operating so the engine can breathe fresh air you know they are in either in open position either in closed position of course and I am going to depict them in open position since the tank before uh, since the tank before it took the shot it was operating it was supposedly engine running so I scratch build those. The gap over here is two centimeters wide. I divided it by two, which means that I need a, a one not one one centimeter wide. Sorry, divided by two, which means that these two slats are half centimeter in uh, width. So I will need to attach those. Those are the parts that I have uh, scratch builded, and I will need to um, uh, damage this part properly. 
um, and then place it on top of here now this I will decide if I am going to do it now or later I am st still thinking about it okay guys I am back I am back I took the decision to uh, <coughs> damage this one and attach it as you can see what what I have done exactly is to use a Dremel to thin the pla to thin the plastic from the inside of uh, of this part, and then I have removed any excess. Uh, I have also attached the uh, my scratch built uh, vents over here to give uh, uh, to give. Uh, the detail missing you know just not to have an empty void since i know that detail is there i opted to do that and uh, i think that right now this is a really good looking um, in the future i will bend them those things up just to give it uh, the, 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 the fake look of explosion and uh, I should call it done over here probably I don't know yet now in my previous uh, step I have forgotten to attach this uh, hatch this engine hatch which is going to be attached over here so let's do that right now since we are at it I have to say that since this is my first time uh, depicting a destroyed vehicle I really find it interesting because you have to plan ahead a lot and you have to consider a lot of stuff you know you have to do to scratch build stuff do stuff uh, do stuff in a different way, etc, etc. So, if you are doing the same build as I, the same, not the same, not the destroyed T-34, a normal T-34, apart this part, uh, while you are completing step number 7, this is what you are supposed to be looking at. Okay, I will need to glue it this one better onto the surface but I am working on it in stages and now let's leave this aside and move on and let's see what the instruction state so from step number five I have done only this one step number six I have done nothing and from step number seven I have attached those this one and all those parts now we move on to step number eight so on step number eight we have two small sub assemblies over here and then we have to attach them on our uh, front armor plate ok guys let's continue with part 8 and I have to warn you that we have a lot of tiny pieces that I decided to film for no obvious reason <laughs> as always so let's see where to start hmm, ok let's start with those tiny parts first that it's go one over here and one over there on the bottom side they have two tiny tiny protruding uh, knobs that correspond with the holes and the, and probably I won't be able to grab them with my tweezers probably Okay, I will need the steady hand of a surgeon here. One over here, and the other one should go over here. Not should, will go over there.
of let's not feed the carpet monster today yeah bear with me guys this is what happens when you decide to do a really detailed kit <laughs> a really detailed dragon kit tiny parts galore those are the drivers vision blocks okay so we have those two out of the way now we have those three which are a mounting point for you know towing stuff uh, you they are two normally I have assembled one of camera which is located over here the other one is gonna go over here and I have done it of camera in order f not for you guys to get bored you know you don't need to see me do the same thing twice don't need to see me fight twice the same part okay as you can see it has a step and it goes here same as the other side in the opposite direction it goes there and now the really tricky stuff I have to feed this pin through both of uh, of the holes mm -hmm. yeah I wish <sighs> hold your breath like a snake Do me the favor, will ya? Yeah, like a boss. Third time is the charm. Let's secure it with a little bit of extra thin. And we are good. And now let's move on to the bigger parts. Okay, we have to uh, make the coaxial machine gun, of course, and I will not add the machine gun because I suppose that the guys that uh, got out of this vehicle alive, because they have no casualties, uh, took the machine gun with them for defense purposes. <laughs> salvage what you can now there is this is another uh, difficult assembly difficult you know you have to be precise parts are keyed so Let me see. Yep, I think that we are good to go. Yeah, exactly. Okay. Lucky me. While I was dry fitting that part, it took me several attempts to get it in place. That's why I say lucky me. and boom in its position and now we have the driver's hats so there is some detail on to 
on the inside let me see I think that it will go this way like so yep This is the driver's vision block, the inner part of it, and now we move on to the outer part of it. No, don't fl don't fly aw away. And there we have this one as well. Now I am debating to leave it open in an open position to depict that guys uh, managed to get away. I will think about it a little bit more, but I think that I will leave it in open position anyway. I'm gonna leave it aside for the time being until I have decided, fully decided, uh, until I get fully dedicated on the open position. And now we will proceed to step 9, to one part of the step 9, which is to attach this one to the upper uh, hole. Let's see. Mind the gaps. And there we have it, guys. This will be it. I think that I have enough footage for uh, for the time being. Let me clean the mess a bit, and I am, and we are going to talk about what we have done so on this step we have attached we have done this one this one this one all these twice as you can see and now we have also done that done those two this 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 and uh, then, 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 11. Hmm. I think that I missed some parts. I'm gonna see. G10 and this won't get untouched. So, no. And we have also attached this one to the upper hole. So, guys, I have checked my footage out and seems that we have enough for this episode. And with all that said and done, we have made it to the end of this episode. On our next episode, we will probably continue uh, with our work on to the, the tier 34. I plan that uh, we should be able to complete the main assembly and decide where exactly the tier 34 took, that, uh, took the round took the the killing blow either on this side or the other i in my mind for the time being i believe that uh, around near the back would be uh, would would be the way to go 
and uh, that's what I have in mind. <laughs> I hope that you guys found this video helpful and interesting and stick along for the next one. Before I go, I want to thank each and every one of you guys that watched this video. A special thank you to all my subscribers, old and new ones. You guys are the best and you are the reason I keep doing these videos. Now, for the newcomers out there that encounter one of my videos for the first time, welcome guys. I hope that you like what I do. If so, you all know what to do. Leave a like, comment with your thoughts and opinions, share the video if you believe it deserves to be shared, or even consider subscribing for more builds to come your way. Until the next time, fellow modelers and friends, take care and model on. It was that Morpho Damon signing out.